Hey guys, it's Kieran. I'm just going to do a quick market update. We've had that FOMC meeting yesterday, and often, as you can imagine, there's often volatility. But for the rest of the week, we have the unemployment numbers coming today, and also core PCI, roughly 1.30 p.m. UK time. So if expect some volatility, and it's okay to not trade, and just let the market settle down before you place any trades, and really important not to jump into things. Looking at the actual Bitcoin chart, we can see that we've been in this huge range for a really, really long time, and it's pretty much been going on from 20th of March all the way to now. It's huge range. But if you look at this, one of the obvious things is this head and shoulder pattern like this. So that's the right shoulder, middle shoulder, and there's the left shoulder. Depends which side you're looking at it. And actually what happens is when a lot of people are looking at this, it can sometimes take its own route. That really disappoints the masses. If you draw a trend line like this, you can see that it's somewhat of a slanted neckline. A touch point here, touch point here, and we had a breakdown here and we back tested it. So what would be the potential measure move of this? So if we draw it from here, from the neckline to the top head here, if you bring it down here, it actually goes into 22.5. Most of you know that I don't trade based on patterns. Over the long run, it can be difficult to be profitable from them. But when it aligns with other analysis, it's nice. I like the fact that this measure moves at 22.5. And I'll explain certain other confluences. It's not what you think, and the route is always not as expected as you think. So look, looking at all this, we also have to be wary of some CME gaps as well. And particularly looking at this CME gap chart here, we had this one from, which has been recently filled from around here. We had this dump here, fill this one. We also have to be careful of this CME gap here. So 29.1 and between the 29.5. And whether you like them or you don't like them, I think statistically 80% of them do fill. But again, it's the exact route can be difficult. And so do we get that f f final push up there? You cannot rule that out. And it's always very difficult. You don't want to be shorting at support here as well. But what if we do get the situation, final liquidity grab and then dump back to breaking out of this range, potentially on 25K? That's something I'm really considering. Of course, there's another CME gap, which we haven't, it's not talked about as much. And it's roughly here between 334K to roughly 35.2K. And this is also something much further down the line. You know, perhaps we do get that run up eventually in the next couple of months. But looking at more local price action, we still are range bound until it's broken. If I draw the fixed range tool from where we initially found support in this huge range from here, like this, if you draw it from here to current price action, you can actually see that we are still below the value area low of this range. And let me explain what I mean by that. So this middle section here with this with these bars are sticking out the most. This is where most of the transactions are, so 68 to 78%. It's high volume area. This lower end is the value area low, and the upper end is the value area high. And so what we want is a reclaim of this value area low from a more macro point of view. Otherwise, the longer we linger here, then it becomes more bearish. But so far, we haven't broken above this range. You know, potential situation could be false breakout like this and move back into the ridge. Maybe if we regain this value area low, then you might get a last push at least to this point of control. Next situation sometimes is you might get initial push up back to this point of control and then leave the range. This is something I do see happens time and time again sometimes. And so it's important not to be too bearish at support and it's okay to be in no position if you don't want to be. Because very often we learn from the previous market cycles is that the range can go a lot longer than you can remain solvent. But going on to the lower time frames, it's still fairly range brown as well. If you draw from fixed range up here to here, you can see that we have broken under this high volume area here. We have broken about it. And so the first sign of going back in the range would naturally be retesting it like this and perhaps another push up. And so far, it's becoming a lot really choppy. And it's, I understand I haven't been placing that many trades the last couple of weeks. I've been mostly, I'm still in my swing position of Bitcoin from 29.9k. But I've been holding that from the 22nd of April. And it's a hedge position against all the other positions I hold. And I've been mostly just sticking to scalping gold and just focusing on other assets, particularly in this time, this very low volatility, choppy time period, and it's okay not to trade. In terms of key levels, not a lot has changed, really. The key levels that I'm interested, first of all, is this weekly level here on 30.3. There's a lot of stop losses there, and that was a key weekly support and resistance. Next one, is, of course, is the monthly open. So this is 29.2K. And this week's open was 26.7K, roughly. And so far, we are below it. I would expect if we did break below 24.8, that you would get initial tag of this monthly level at one point as well. So this is what I was talking about earlier, that measure move with the head and shoulder pattern. The other thing is that there's a lot of, there's a huge imbalance if you can see. If you can see in this chart, we have a wick here and then we have a wick here, but there's a huge gap, a fair value gap like this. And it's 
going all the way down to 22.6. And so this is why I like that the head and shoulders conf- confluence, but I would never trade blindly based on it. As I mentioned before, you have to also consider the possibility that we do get that final leg up to take out that semi gap at around 29.1. You know, potentially something like this and then a breakdown. That is definitely possible as well. Looking at the five day Gaussian channel, we are still above this top band and the top band is around 24.9. This might be a bit of a bounce region, but we are above it, which is good in some sense. Perhaps we do get that final push down eventually and then, then have a leg maybe to new local highs and maybe in the summer. But what's interesting is that it has turned green now as well. I was saying as well in the five day Gaussian channel, once you initially break out above it and then retest the top band, please appreciate it's a five day candles. Then statistically, there's a 30 to 40% run up to the top. And so far, we ha- this is a roughly uh, 20% run up. So it's not to say that we perhaps might get a move down here and then eventually push back up. The biggest sign of concern is, of course, I don't think it's going to be as simple as just going down to 24.8k and then go back up. You, you would expect at least some of those fair value gaps were covered. The biggest red flag that would be a breakdown to at least this middle band. That's at the at the very most. But then going back to the bottom one would just be really, really bad. Looking at the weekly Gaussian channel, I explained how last couple of weeks we had a quick wick of this and we slightly front ran this. And so the big question to beg is, do we eventually get the tag of this mid band of the weekly Gaussian channel? And the top band is around 29.8. And the bottom band is on 20.5. And so these are also things I'm looking at. Do we front run it here? Do we finally get test here? And so this is the legendary harmonic, shock harmonic that I've been talking about since 22nd, but pretty much the midweek of April. And it's still valid. This is a bearish structure. And the first target is actually 24.8. And my last take profit would be, using other key levels would roughly be 22.5 and 23.1 as well. But again, this is a swing trade, so it can take a couple of weeks to play out. And so far, it is working well. And I know a couple of you caught this trade as well. So far, in the lower time frames, it's still range bound until we break this range. Perhaps in summary, we might get some final push above to this recover the CME gap and then a dump below. Or the dump might just happen now. And it's just having two separate plans and not getting too attached to one plan. Looking at the longer short ratio, I'm sure you can appreciate how so much can change. The longer short ratio is essentially looking at how which proportion of retail traders, mostly Binance retail traders who do not win in the long run, and what their positioning is in the market. Very often, the market moves to disappoint the masses, and only few actually win in trading and investing in the long run. So as you can see, this curve here for retail, the long short ratio actually went down here on the 23rd of May. So two, three days ago, like this, and we actually fell down to 0.55. And if you can see, in this position, even... The actual top traders here were actually overall increasing the long exposure. But then all of a sudden, the last two days after this dump, we've actually gone net long again of 0.7. And so this doesn't look good. It's that kind of that mentality of buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And the more concerning thing is that the open interest has gone up as well. And so open interest is essentially looking at the opening and exiting of new positions. And so what you can see is that there's been an opening of new positions. And overall, it seems there's been an opening of net longs by retail. And so this is something else I'm looking at. But we can appreciate that a lot can change. But so far, does this does not this added element of information does not make things the most bullish in the world. And so we'll have to see how this evolves. Looking at the S&P 500 index, we are at some dangerous crossroads as well. So far, I explained how it seems to be some kind of compression like this, essentially in this somewhat of a symmetrical triangle. And we initially broke above this. Question now is, do we get a move back in to this range here and then have a breakdown. Because sometimes what happens is you do get a fake out like this before moving back to new lows, just making people really get excited. And the question now is, do we hold this trend line here, which has been acting as resistance for a couple of points, going from the macro here, touch to here, we touch to here, touch to here. And the question is, do we flip this and have a run up to this 4.3K four, 4. weekly level as a potential situation, or do we dump now? And I explained how before, if that did happen, I might consider short position. We have this key level here. So if, for example, we pushed above like this and then have a false break out of this recent high, then I might actually enter a short position once we tag that liquidity out all the way down to this weekly, pretty much this key level around 37.50. And of course, I'll adapt my analysis then, but that could be a quick, quite of a juicy swing short position to really keep your eye on. Looking at the Dixie chart, I spoke about this in the Sunday stream, which really has given a heads up. So we've naturally been in this, pretty much this channel for so many years. And we're at this bottom channel here, and that support region. And then I drew this harmonic to explain how the Dixie is actually looking bullish. And this sometimes these harmonics can work out well. But in confluence with just the way it was holding up this key 
support level and just back tested it and then went higher. This I explained how the target of this harmonic is 104 and we've actually reached my target. And I called it actually three weeks ago and I reminded everyone that, look, we might get a pop in the Dixie, which perhaps in the common wisdom is it can help risk on assets like Bitcoin and certain other assets as well. And so far we've pretty much heading the $104 direction. Questions, do we tag this weekly level here? And so, so far it looks close. Gold as well, as you can imagine, we've had a huge run up this year. Naturally, there is some resistance around this key levels here, here. And perhaps we do get that final push up. You know, maybe do we do tag liquidity and take out like a false breakout like this? And then the question is, do we move back in? It is a very precarious situation. You know, I can understand why some people might want to take short term trades, but you have to appreciate that it's very difficult along from a conventional wisdom sense when you're at local resistance. There is some bearish divergence as well in the higher time frames. Again, Bitcoin dominance has still pretty much been range bound for almost two or three years. We haven't really gone above significantly 50% in a while. I do expect eventually we do tag this roughly 52% level. This is a 382 Fibonacci if you drop from local high. So from January 2021, a macro high to the recent lows. But potentially we could consolidate here and then all of a sudden it might go to this 52% level. And so guys, thanks a lot for watching. Do check out my YouTube channel. This is where I post all my market updates, but also my passion for crypto and trading in general and just tips and tricks to really fast track your trading process.